Good morning, everyone. I tried to film our read aloud outside this morning because it's such a nice breezy day. Um, but I went out there and that little birdie that you always hear during my lessons is tweeting so loudly today, louder than usual. And I think he really wants us to hear him. I can even hear him inside right now. So I decided we're going to have to keep this read aloud inside today, but that's okay. So today I have a really just special book to read to you today. Um, I really love this book and I'll tell you a little story about it. Um, it is called Twilight Comes Twice, and it's written by Ralph Fletcher and illustrated by Kate Keisler. So I discovered this book in my classroom this summer when I was setting it all up and getting ready for you guys. So I had every single book in our library just piled up on all the desks in the classroom, all of your desks, before you guys were in my class. Um, so I had them all piled up and I was going through every book really quickly and just sorting, where does this one go? Okay, this one goes in animals, this one goes here, and I was sorting them all. And so I opened this one up and I said, hmm, where will this one go? looked kind of different and so I sat down and I would just usually read a little bit of the book and try to decide where it went but this book is written in a really beautiful way and it's really special and so I sat down to read a little bit of it and I just got I don't know entranced and I read the whole thing and I felt like I was transported to another world when I was reading it it was just so beautiful and written so nicely and I just had this moment in all the craziness of moving into my classroom and trying to get everything ready, I had this moment of just kind of calm and peace, and I read this book, and it just made me feel really happy and warm inside, and I hope you really love it too. So why I chose to read this book to you is because it's written in a really masterful way, and we can study the author's craft and talk about it, because this is a really awesome author. He wrote it in such a beautiful way. So you're going to no notice that he uses a lot of descriptive, really creative, sparkle words in here. Um, so while we're reading, I would love for you to get a piece of paper out and a pencil and record all the sparkle words or just a couple sparkle words. Let's say you can record five sparkle words that you hear that you really love and you think the author did a great job using. Things that are creative and that you wouldn't think to use all the time. So record those sparkle words on a sheet of paper and you can submit those to me on Canvas under the read aloud and tell me maybe why you picked them. Um, or if you want, you can write down some of the sentences that you hear, maybe one or two, that you think are written in a really beautiful way. And we'll kind of stop to talk about the sentences and think about them along the way. Okay, but I'm going to stop building it up and go ahead and read it to you guys. I think you're really going to like it. Twilight Comes Twice Twice each day, a crack opens between night and day. Twice twilight slips through that crack. It stays only a short time while night and day stand whispering secrets before they go their separate ways. Wow. I remember being blown away by this first page. How did the author think to write that night and day stand whispering secrets before they go their separate ways? Why do you think the author chose to write it in that way? Dusk is the name for evening twilight. Dusk gives a signal for night to be born. Dusk deepens the colors of ordinary things. Even the common grass takes on a luster that makes you stop to look. Mm, I love that word luster. It's beautiful. Do you notice that when the sun sets and you're looking all around and have you ever noticed when things are like really orangey maybe and everything looks so beautiful and vivid because the sun is giving it that beautiful color? In the summer, dusk hisses on sprinklers. It flushes out millions of mosquitoes and armies of bats to eat them. Fireflies appear swimming through the air writing bright messages in secret code. Wow. So why do you think the author chose to write that last sentence like that? Why did she say that the fireflies swim through the air and write bright messages in secret code? Why didn't the author just write fireflies light up outside? Why did she choose to write it that way? What do you think? Make a little jot about it. Oh, there are the fireflies in the picture. I didn't even notice them. Slowly, dusk pours the syrup of darkness into the forest. Crows gather in the trees for a last-minute gossip before nightfall. 
In the park, Dusk let, will let the kids finish, if they hurry, the Little League game on the baseball diamond. So it's saying Dusk is like that last final time to hurry up and get done with their games before they have to go home and go to bed and eat dinner. Two fishermen stand at the edge of a lake, casting far out into fading light. Streetlights flicker on in the deepening dusk. Trains bring people home, hungry and tired from work. Dusk prepares for the great celebration of night. It sets the table carefully. Venus, a few stars, perhaps a crescent moon. When the sky is full and singing with stars, you know that twilight has given way to true night. Mm. So what do you think the author meant by dust prepares for the great celebration of night? What do you think that means? Why do you think the author tried to write in that way? And don't worry about guessing correctly or thinking of exactly what the author meant. These things are up to how you think about it in your own brain. So maybe the way I think about it is different than the way you think about it. That's okay. I just want to hear your thoughts and get you thinking about why the author wrote that way. In the early morning, a pale twilight touches the edge of the sky. It is called dawn. Dawn is like a seed that will grow into daylight. With invisible arms, dawn erases the stars from the blackboard of night. Soon, just the moon and a few stars remain. Wow. I love how the author wrote that dawn is like a steed that will grow into daylight. Dawn is like the tiny hours of the morning when it's barely light outside. And it's like a seed that grows into daylight. Isn't that so cool how the author wrote that? Dawn picks bits of dark from between the blades of grass in your backyard. No job is too small. In the forest, dawn drinks up night's leftover darkness, the great black pools and deep-rooted shadows. Wow. So did you hear how dusk poured in the darkness and dawn drinks up the night's leftover darkness? That's a cool way to think of it. It's kind of like a comparison. Walking at dawn is a special kind of walk. Sounds ring out more clearly. The air is still moist from the cool of the night and your own skin feels all tingly clean. Dawn signals the crows to start their jabbering. What a racket they make in the willow tree. Down below, three robins hop through wet grass, shopping for breakfast worms. Hmm. I like how she said that, or how the author said that the birds are shopping for their breakfast worms. It's an interesting way to put it. Spiders rouse themselves, still stiff from the night, and go to work repairing their dew-swangled webs. Dawn slowly brightens the empty baseball field polishing the diamond until it shines. At the lake, a boy sits quietly, trying not to disturb the fish coming up to feed. Streetlights flicker off. A delivery truck leaves a bundle of newspapers on the sidewalk. Outside the bakery, the smell of donuts makes your stomach rumble and growl. Mm. As you set your table for breakfast, dawn sets its own table with light that ushers in a brand new day. So did you notice how before they said dusk sets the table for nighttime for dinner? And now they're saying dawn sets its own table for breakfast, for morning. So it's kind of like they're personifying 
the day. Do you remember when we talked about personification when we were reading Owl Moon? It's kind of like they made Dawn and Dusk into almost like people. They're giving them people-like characteristics, like Dawn and Dusk can set the table like people can. Oh, the end. Okay, that was the end. So what did you think of the book? Did you like the way the author wrote it? I thought it was really beautifully written, and it kind of made me think about how I want to, in my own writing, use more sparkle words and more description and really think of things in creative ways instead of just writing them the plain old way I think of them and see them normally. So I would love for if after this book you think of, I phrase that weirdly, I would love if you came up with kind of a goal for yourself as a writer after reading this book. So maybe you can make a goal for yourself to use more descriptive words. Or maybe you can make a goal for yourself to revise some sentences and try to think of things in a more interesting way or try to think of things from a new perspective and write them in a more interesting way. Think about it. Think about if you could make your writing a little bit more masterful or try to improve your writer's craft, kind of like this author did, because I'm sure this author had to think for a really long time and really, really try to refine what he was writing and write it in just the right way to make the language sound so special and just cozy warm. I thought this book was so special and just nice to read. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you can make kind of a goal for yourself after reading this and maybe just try to add one new sparkle word in your writing today. I hope you guys liked it as much as I did. See you guys soon. Bye!